We're going to open the meeting of Board of Selectmen special meeting interviews in town business on April 12th, 2024 at 10.53 a.m. Okay. All right. First up will be the interview preparation. So question one and two will be mine. Lucy will take three. Aaron will take four and five. I'll take six. Lucy, you got seven. How do you guys want to do with the others? The three miscellaneous? No. There's two more. There's two more on that first list. Okay. Um I was I would do the last three of that session. Right, but what about the the two there? So I can do um the second to last there. And if Lucy, you do the third to last. Yeah. I mean, the last, last there. The last, last? In that first section. Cool. Okay. And then we each take one of the miscellaneous. Yep. Don, Lucy, Aaron. Yep. Is that good? That works. Yeah, that's fine. And then one of the things that are not really in here is do we have enough um, questions about how they could practically do things like um, using email, using spreadsheets. Um, when they give their background or what their skills we'll are. We'll get an idea of those skills. She's got it all. Okay. Okay. This, yeah. this is very detailed. She's, she's Is that really, the first one? Yes. Yep. That was Mrs. Harper. Okay. She's very, very good. Um, and so this, this one is a little bit different as far as the scoring. Um, it's zero to 10 points, um, instead of zero to five. And there are different, uh, uh, questions within, um, uh, each of those sections to try to come up with a score. Let's listen to this voicemail for a second. Which was your other one? Dumpster. Your I'm sorry. I, I missed on that one. Hey, Justin. Thank you for the first. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. My cross yeah. started. Then it, it should be an L, and it looked funny. <laughs> <laughs> and then. Okay, and then I get to do this one down here. Okay. I'll try not to interrupt your questions this time. <laughs> I, I just blurted it out because I wanted to under you know know what the guy did with mechanic and he hadn't said. <laughs> um. And then I realized we were doing alternate questions anyway, and I said I should have waited till it was my turn. <laughs> I just got a message about the Mickey Roof here. Did you want the highway to hold off putting the top over the while we're doing this meeting or oh um well the top shouldn't really I don't think it'll affect cause any problems with the meeting unless they felt so they know. I'll just put on the top and not bang anything. So. Don't mind our parents. Let's do because they are going to have to nail it down. Okay. But they don't know how to nail it down because they don't want to do any of the wood that's out there. That wood may not be good enough to. Oh, you can sit right at the front seat. I'm here. Nothing they do is going to really take care of them. Or what they're it, about. It, yeah. No, there's nothing about it. This is a flat roof oh, right here. Yeah. I say everybody when we're calling people, they're saying it's by the chimney. We're saying no, it's above the voting room. There is nothing else above us, so it, it's easy to get to. This is Harper. Howdy, Aaron. How are you? I'm good, Lucy. How are you? Good, good things. We're just swimming a little bit. That's all. That's okay. <laughs> I can understand. Not interfering with us, but they're not coming in here. So they already came in. Yeah. Earlier. We we try calling Scott Stinson because he works on roofs and like that, but yeah. he's, he's heading to a funeral. 
So instead, if it was more of a roof thing, you know, yeah. I'd recommend to contact more of a roofer or, you know. Yeah. I mean, that we would do on a day that it doesn't rain. <laughs> well, that's why we thought the tarp might be a, a good idea. Yeah. And then Kevin said, yeah, that wasn't a bad idea. We said an, um, an appointment. Yeah. So, I don't know what the guys decided. Well, they're here. Oh, are they? Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. Well, I thought if Kevin had that staging that he wanted, oh, they, the they could raise them right up and it would have been easier. Mm. Okay, well. Just waiting for the third member to come back. And okay. We'll get going here. Okay. Hi, Susan, thank you. Hey, Karen, I'm Don Hefekowski. I'm the chairman of the board. This is Lucy Testino, the vice chairman. And Karen Langlois, the clerk. Hey. we got a bunch of questions we're going to ask you, but we're going to start off with, give us who you are, what your background is, and why you're here. Okay. Um, my background professionally um, is I worked 21 years at Bay State Savings Bank. Um, and uh, prior to that, um, well, way prior to that, I had put in 24 years at D Digital Equipment Corporation, DC, it's commonly known, now known as DCU, as the credit union. But um, And then in between, I had, um, I worked for um, a software development company, um, and that was called Tracer Research. Um, and then I worked for Cigna Healthcare, um, worked for the quality management um, department. Um, and then I worked um, at the bank. Um, I ha at the bank, I had a varied background. I started out in administrative support. Um, and then I moved on to be the online banking manager there. Um, and I transitioned the bank from no online banking to the online banking platform. Um, and we changed service providers. It was quite a job, quite a challenge. <laughs> Uh, but it was a lot of fun because it was involved in a lot of technical aspects um, in addition to the banking knowledge. Um, so it was really an incredible experience. And then from there, I went to being branch supervisor uh, at the um, Auburn branch. And yet again, another big difference, you know, because I was doing direct customer interaction um, where with online banking, it was, you know, all online. So, yeah. So. And um, we moved here in 2009. Um, we moved from Worcester. My husband's a retired firefighter and um, from the city of Worcester. And um, we had done some shopping around for land and all that. And we built in 2009 and was very much involved with Lucy at that time. Conservation. Oh, conservation, yeah. 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 Okay. I just remember they tried so hard from DEP to come down and find a wetland plant. Uh, oh, yeah, right. I mean, it was, it was an, inc that was an experience in and of itself as well. I mean, very big learning process, a lot of research on our part, you know, and we had a cease and desist order because of the um, wetlands and the um, swale coming across the road. And we had a reposition where the house is going to be built and we changed builders in the process and <laughs> it was quite an experience, you know, in addition to learning about building a house and choosing all the different things that you want, we had to learn all the things about the, the land and the property and the rules and, you know, what is, you know, safe to do and not safe to do and all that. So um, I'm an animal lover. So when we have the bears, I talk to them. <laughs> um, we had moose in the yard the other day, three of them dancing around and, you know, just having a grand time. And then the day before that, we had three reindeer come in. 
So, and then we had one year, we haven't had it for a couple of years, but one year we had this big, huge turtle. Um, and she just rested herself right there. I went out and talked to her and took pictures. And <laughs> wow. um, you know, we, obviously we have a lot of bird, bird sanctuary next to us and have great pictures of hummingbirds and woodpeckers. And so just loving it. <laughs> <laughs> good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, Sounds good. Yeah. So, we're each going to ask you a series of questions. And okay. Take your time. How do you ensure accuracy and attention to detail when handling sensitive documents or data? Um, that is one thing that I really focus a lot on, the accuracy of everything that I do. Um, I cross-check everything that I'm using as the source for the information. Um, and then if I'm really taking it and putting it into, let's say, another application or another form or whatever, I, you know, I just cross-check and make sure that everything is accurate and everything is the same that it's supposed to be. Um, doing it online, you can, there's a lot of checking you can do, you know, especially if you're using a spreadsheet and that type of thing. You can do a, a search to compare data and make sure that you make the corrections and all that. Um, I'm an avid user of spell check to make sure that there aren't any errors in um, that side of things. But in terms of the technical accuracy of, of the detail, I always do a, you know, a very detailed um, check to make sure before I proceed to go on to the next step. Um, and then if I go on to the next step and there should be any discrepancy in how things are working out, I'll go back and double check to make sure that it's a true discrepancy in, in what I'm trying to analyze or you know, compute um, and make and highlight what that is and then find out what the right thing is to do with that. Um, if that's the way the data is supposed to be represented, um, if there's some sort of correction, then there would be a footnote that would be required to explain what the difference is, that kind of thing. Okay, thank you. What strategies do you employ to prioritize and manage multiple tasks? Um, the first thing would be what the deadline is. Um, and then the second thing would be the urgency, not just the deadline, but the urgency in terms of what has to be done. A deadline might be a week away, but there may be some things that are involved in it that require some extra steps. You know, so I'd have to take a look at what the whole project is to make sure that I can assess what I should be starting first and, you know, if I can have multiple things going on at the same time, what I can put aside for follow up, if I have to reach out to somebody for feedback or for other information or answers or whatever, um, you know, I'll put that and I'll prioritize it and I'll, I'll set a calendar up for that. Okay. Very good. Thank you. How would you handle an irated customer and still maintain professionalism and courtesy? So um, that's an excellent question. And um, I do, I did have them occasionally, you know, at the bank when things didn't work out the sure. way that they wanted them to work out. And basically just say, you know, step back for a second and just say, okay, let's take a look at the whole thing. Um, you know, they'll, sometimes somebody will come in really irate, you know, and just, you know, want an answer right away. Um, but you really need to take a look at basically at all the details, you know, taking a minute just to calm down. I'm sorry you feel that way. And uh, let's see how we can work this thing out um, and find out what the real issues are. Um, sometimes it you don't really solve the issue, um, you know, but at least the, the customer feels as if you took the time to identify what the real problems were. And if it's something that they did an error, you know, you don't point out that it was their error, um, but it, it kind of like evolves to them realizing, you know, how the transaction or how the, the event transpired and what the reasons were and the causes. And, okay, let's see what we're, where we can go from here, how we can fix it. Okay. Um. Can you provide an example of a time when you had to resolve a conflict or disagreement within a team or within with a member of the public? Can you think of an example where you dealt with that? Um, can you be a little bit more? So thinking back, um, is there a conflict that you had, let's say with a, a coworker um, and maybe the strategies that you'd kind of talked about previous maybe how it ended up? 
Okay. Well, what's coming to my mind is um, I was also involved in um, training new hires that came on board. And um, I, re I recall one time where the new hire had previous um, banking experience. So the first input that I received was that you don't really need to spend a lot of time with this person. Um, and that came from management, you know, because, you know, this person has X number of years banking experience and all that. Well, it turned out that the banking experience was like five years prior. There had been experience in between. So I had to recalibrate how that training was going to take place. And it was indefinite and conflict with what the manager's perspective was and perception was of how to proceed. Um, so what I ended up doing was um, talking with the manager and I had to get HR involved because it was a training kind of issue. And even though I wasn't quote unquote, the trainer for the bank, I was chatted with doing this particular training. Um, so we had to establish, you know, what the strategy would be. Um, and I didn't want to, you know, do anything that was going to put the manager in a negative light, you know, but at the same time, I'm doing the training and, you know, I was feeling as if this person um, really needed some in-depth, you know, back to basics kind of training. So that's where I wanted to start. So we came to a um, middle ground where um, we didn't actually start from ground zero, if you will, with the, the training. Um, what we did was we let her, the, the new hire, um, do some transactions, and I was able to um, view and, you know, watch what she was doing, and then from there develop a unique training um, focus for that. So it worked out in the long run, but it was a little bit you know, tricky because they expected this person because of her background for one, you know, to come right on board and, and you know, start doing the, the telework. But that wasn't going to happen once I realized, you know, one, it was a quite a while ago, five years is a long time, technology changes and all that, um, to bring her up to speed. Um, and, you know, so it, it, it worked out, but it was, it, 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 it was a little testy, a little bit, you know, because the, the person who was hired was also told that, you know, she would be able to jump in right away. So she kind of did jump in, you know, because she got to do some real transactions, but I benefited from it by able to customize, you know, how we were going to proceed from there. And then we, the, the four of us actually, um, the manager, HR, the new hire and me, um, plotted out a plan to move forward. So, but it was. It was the best possible outcome but not necessarily the way it was envisioned in right. the beginning and you right. found a way to. Right. So I wasn't the only one that had to adjust. Everybody else did too, um, but everybody was on the same page once we got things rolling. So, but it, you know, I mean, it's when you have some, when you have expectations set up, um, you know, it's, you, you kind of like have to be, if you're the person that has to be the bearer of the bad news, well, hey, this isn't going to work. You kind of have to like take it from everybody's perspective and, and play it out that way. So yeah. it does require some extra stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What steps do you take to uh, stay updated on rev relevant regulations or procedures? So I'm sure in banking, um, there were changes. Um, can you imagine, I'd say in municipal government, how you would stay up to date with relevant regulations or procedures? Um, again, I think the basic thing would be first, you know, talking with everybody that I'm, you know, working with. Um, and the other one is just as in banking, staying up on what all the regulations are personally. Um, you know, there's ongoing training all the time that takes place. Um, and without that, then there's, you know, it's, it's your own personal interest, you know, to stay up to stuff on whatever regulation changes there might be. Mm -hmm. um, I'm an avid user of the website to make sure, you know, that what I'm thinking is in sync with what the real regs are. Um, and if they're not, then I'll reach out and ask questions, um, you know, because it's really important to be on top of, you know, what's going on. Because that way, whoever you're servicing, um, you know, they're expecting you to know um, and if you were to be communicating incorrect information, um, then it's, you know, going to cause all kinds of things in the long run. So, um, but.
but you know, first source would be, you know, locally. Um, and then next I would, you know, go to the website and make sure that everything is in sync. And if it isn't, then again, you know, reach out to whomever I'm working with or whatever the situation and project might be just to say, oh, did you know, um, this is what this document says, or this reg says, um, am I interpreting it wrong? Or, you know, is there some, something that we're, um, accommodating differently because of different rules that apply here, you know, that kind of thing. Cause that happens in banking too. Yeah. We, um, the town uh, clerk belongs to an association. Um, the secretary of state's office very much is involved with what the town clerk does. They have resources. Um, and then there are resources amongst the town clerks in the area. Yeah. Um, that certainly would be good uh, resources. Yeah. Yeah, but this, generally, I mean, there's there's a you can tap into all kinds of resources, and you know, if you don't get what you need, then the whole thing is all around communicating to, you know, find out, you know, okay, what am I missing, and where do I go from here, kind of deal. So, okay. <clears throat> Anything else? How do you maintain confidentiality when dealing with sensitive information? Um, again, that was very important, you know, in the banking industry and when I was working at digital for, I mean, at digital, if you will, that's where I grew up from a technology perspective and a lot of things are very confidential. And if somebody doesn't have a need to know, if somebody is not authorized to know, then you don't share. Um, and many times, um, even with customers, you know, I mean, there's just so much that, there's a line that you can get to um, and you just don't communicate everything. You know, you find a way to get the message across, but um, you don't communicate, you know, all the um, unauthorized details, if you will. Um, and again, you know, sometimes it's very sensitive and sometimes it's, you know, you just can't share. Um, but depending upon what the scenario might be, again, I would go to whomever I'm working with or whoever I report to and say, you know, this is a problem, you know, because I can't share this information, but it has a direct impact on, you know, what the outcome is going to be um, and what the takeaway is for the individual that I'm not letting them know this detail. Um, but then there's a high risk or, or low risk, you know, if we, you know, it proceed and share more than what we're supposed to share. Um, it can be sensitive, but you gotta you gotta understand what it is you're supposed to share and not share, and take it from there. Thank you. Okay, can you describe your experience with using software databases in keeping your records and data management? Okay, mostly um, I use um, Excel for a lot, my home records. Um, I do um, cost analysis, budget analysis, if we're, um, and I also did that when I worked at um, the bank. Um, one of the things, as you can imagine, is sales was a very big important issue, um, mortgages and that, and I became the go-to for Excel spreadsheets and um, tracking budgets, goals, and objectives to actual spending, um, and doing charts um, that you know showed what the performance was, um, and that type of thing to be able to keep track of where we were. Um, I also did um, budgeting um, on my own behalf when I was the online banking manager. Obviously, I would have a budget that I'd had to adhere to, adhere to on an annual basis and. Um, on a monthly basis, I would always do budget tracking to see where we were, how I was mapping against the goals and that kind of thing. So um, I use a lot of um, um, uh, Microsoft applications. Um, I use PowerPoint for presentation purposes and Publisher as well um, for document purposes, that kind of thing. So. Um, how do you ensure that all paperwork and documentation are completed accurately and in a timely manner? Um, again, um, I, that goes back to setting up what the deadlines are for each in particular, each document. Um, every document would probably have a set of um, people who have to review it. And so we set up what that review process is and um, when they, um, I'm expecting the feedback you know, back and stay on top of that and remind people, 
you know, that comments on whatever the document is, is due by, you know, I haven't received any comments yet. Um, and then making sure that I did receive everything. And once I did, if there's any sign off that has to be accomplished, then to make sure we get the right sign off in place um, and maintain all of that, um, either electronically or in paper, either way. I do a lot of scanning and um, PDF documents and everything. So, I mean, you can sign PDF documents and you can insert what the signature requirements are and that. So if people aren't available, then you can always do a um, PDF and have it sent out for signature and get the comp back and maintain it that way. Can you discuss your approach in collaborating with other departments or agencies within the local government? Um, I don't have any experience in doing that, but I think it wouldn't be much different than, you know, reaching out to, you know, departments that need to be involved and, um, making sure that I'm communicating with the, the right people. And if I'm not to, you know, find out who the right people are, um, and just, you know, basically keeping an open dialogue with everybody that I'm supposed to be interfacing with. Tell us about a suggestion that you've made that has benefited your organization that you've worked for, any of them. Okay, um, this is going back. They used to have a Bright Ideas um, program at the bank. Um, and one basic one that was um, kind of fun um, and it kind of narrowed down um, what the bank was doing and actually single sourced out um, what the um, supplies were, but um, they had every department and every branch doing their own supply ordering. Um, you know, so they would be using the branches were mostly in Worcester, but they had one in Auburn um, and Holden. And so they would be ordering their supplies from whoever the office of service supply was locally. And that kind of, um, that was when I was um, working for it, doing the administrative support. And so I said to myself, this was kind of like crazy um, because my previous experience was that if you had a relationship with a service provider, you know, like WB Mason or Staples or whatever, um, then you can establish better pricing, you can establish better servicing, um, and the departments can still do their own ordering, but it's within the, you know, parameters of what the relationship is with the service provider. So I made that suggestion and um, lo and behold, that's the way that they went. Okay. And so that was a lot of fun. <laughs> you must have had some other really good ideas because I see that you had the President's Award, the Bright Ideas Award recipient and yeah. Employee of the Month. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yep, I did all that. Um, on the President's Award, I um, did community service. Um, I mentored um, a student at Devereaux um, and um, they were very much, um, the, the top management at the bank was very much involved in what was you know, going on at um, Devereaux. So um, I mentored um, a student there for a couple of years and um, with the amount of service time that I put in and doing that, that's how I got the president's award and I got that two years in a row. So Very nice. Yeah. That was very nice. Yeah. Excellent. So, what about this position now that you're applying for attracts you the most? Um, it's being in touch with what's going on in the town and, you know, staying on top of everything and seeing how I might be able to contribute to make things run smoothly um, and, you know, just become more knowledgeable of what's going on. Um, I wanted to do that for a while, but, you know, I was very much involved in, you know, the other banking <laughs> aspects, but, um, and then when I saw that, it was actually after we came to meet with Maribel when Kevin needed to have the document notarized and I got home and I got on the computer and I said, hey, they didn't say anything, <laughs> you know, so um, I just took it as, you know, my chance and opportunity to go and talk and see what we could work out. You've seen kind of the, the, a few of the job um, description um, goals of what we're hoping to accomplish with this um, clerk assistant. What would you say are the top three skills that make you the best candidate for this type of position? 
Um, one, I would say attention to um, detail for the tracking and everything that you mentioned in the you know description on, on the data um, that you um, want to be able to maintain the accuracy of the data and cross checking and making sure everything is correct. Um, and the the other one I would say is communication. Um, you know, just if I don't understand something, then I've got to speak out and you know find out you know what is and what isn't, and um, maybe I'm missing something. Um, you know, there's always different avenues to follow, but I think those two things is the attention to detail and communication. Yes. I just happened to notice graduate of New England School of Financial Studies at Babson. I'm a Babson graduate also. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> enforcement management. Yeah. Oh, very nice. Um, that was a huge opportunity that I was given actually by the president of the bank at the time. Um, my direct manager didn't think that, you know, I was really qualified or whatever, but the president thought otherwise. And the uh, my manager said, well, you know, you, you're going to be away from home and this and that. But it was a fascinating experience. Um, and again, I got to do, um, you know, a lot of different research, not just on the bank, but in the financial industry in general. So um, it was a two year program mm -hmm. and I graduated in 2011. And um, in the midst of doing that in um, doing that, that's when I was also doing the conversion and online banking from a service provider to a new service provider. So it was very um, entailed and talk about detail to pay attention to. It was it was. It was challenging and a lot of fun. One thing that struck me about Babson was the cafeteria. The food in the cafeteria was from all over the world. It and it, it was great. And it was huge meals. Oh, I mean, it was just, you know, it was just crazy. I, I put on weight. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still a certified notary public? Yes. Sure. It may come in handy. Um, it expires in 28, I think. Okay. Yeah. Mine too. <laughs> Any other? I have a follow-up. Uh, a couple follow-ups. Um, how, about how many hours are you open to uh, working a week? And are you aware that um, the town... Um, has a interim position right now and will potentially either have an elected or a future appointed position as the actual town clerk? Um, do you want me to answer the second one first? Or? Yeah, whichever way you want. <laughs> um, yes, I am. Um, and I also um, explored that and was hoping that that might be, you know, an, an opportunity to put out on the table. I know that that requires, you know, to be voted in and all of that. Um, but yes. Okay. Um, and then I'm open to talk about the number of hours. Um, I know that it was, you know, as needed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that could be as little as an hour, I suppose, on, you know, some scenarios, and it could be, you know, up to 40 on another scenario. So um, right now, you know, I'm, I'm pretty flexible. Um, I am still in the process of pursuing a part time um, job. But um, again, I'm flexible. And, you know, we can work that out as yeah, I, I was thinking, like, if um, the position of town clerk became available, Right now, it's estimated at about 15 hours a week. Yeah. Would that be an issue for no, you? No, okay. no, no. Now, would there be, would you, would it be a schedule or would it be, you know, hey, we need you to do this. Can you do it now? Or can you do it in tomorrow or that kind of thing? Is it a... For the assistant one, I think it's kind of as needed. Yeah. Um, but potentially, if there were a future position, there are some set office hours. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But then there are hours that are done outside of the, yeah. the office hours. And I, um, to be honest, too, I um, even at the bank, I did a lot of work from home. Um, you know, I never just let it stay at the mm -hmm. branch or whatever. So I have, a you know, computer access at home and all that. So I'm the, I, that's how I keep up with the spreadsheets and everything. So, Good. Pictures Good. and I make do pictures and all that. Additional hours with the elections too. 
that that would be especially the time. Yeah, yeah, that's when yeah. Talking. The elections take yeah. an awful lot of time. Yeah, and that's away from the town clerk. Yeah. yeah. So, again, the elections are uh, set dates. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so you yep. just work the schedule, you know, around that and um, take it from there. But um, I'm pretty flexible. Okay. And this year, of course, is the big. Biggest election of them all, so oh, that is going to take quite a bit of time. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Anything else? No. Nope. We'll see. I'm all, I'm all set. Yeah. All set. Do you have any questions of us? So, well, we kind of answered them along the way. Oh. Um, you know, with you know the demand and you know what your expectations are. So, okay. um, you know, I just want to reinforce that I think I would be able to you know participate and help with the the town management and mm -hmm. I think it would be it would be fun as well as productive and mm -hmm. exhausting and, well <laughs> it, the it, reward it, is it great can be, yes but yeah it can be frustrating I'm sure if you don't get what you need when you need it and that type of thing yeah. but you know yeah. there's ways to work it <laughs> okay all right thank you thank okay. you very much thank you so thank much you. for thank coming in Fancy, yeah, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> and when I walk out, it's probably going to downfall like crazy. Oh, yeah. Well, at least we have a tarp on the roof now, so. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh. As long as we don't get the wind, because you know what it'll do to it. Yeah. Up here. Oh, really? Yeah, the noise and it'll tear it. Oh, boy. I'll it's so okay. up here. Right, we yeah. get really bad. Good morning. Good morning. Is um who's the next one? Low on this schedule for Tuesday. Thursday. Okay. Next yeah. well. Hi there. Hello. This is Max. This is Good morning. Have a costume chairman, yeah. Lucy Tatnow, and Aaron Langlois, the Board of Selectmen. Max, we're going to ask you a series of questions. <clears throat> yep. But before we get started, why don't you just give us an overview of who you are and why you're here? So, my name is Max Ballou. Um, I recently graduated Suffolk University um, in December. I guess I don't have my diploma yet because I studied abroad. And the study abroad uh, university, which was Glasgow University in Scotland, has not, well, they failed to send the, um, my grades on time. <laughs> but they now have them, and I have all the credit. So, I should be great <laughs> to graduate. I was really hoping to graduate in December. But it didn't happen, so I'm graduating in May, I guess. Yeah. But I already have all the credit, so good. Kind of just in limbo, waiting. <laughs> but, um, so I have a handout with my resume. If you guys want, yep, we have it. They have it. Oh, you have it. Yeah. Okay. All right, perfect. I printed extras just in case. Right. Um. Yeah. So I graduated with a 3.86 GPA, which I think is pretty good. <laughs> I'm not really good at bragging about myself, but very <laughs> proud of that. Um. So, yeah, so then I'm here because I really want to get involved with municipal government um, and work to help towns kind of improve themselves and implement whatever the town of Oakham needs. So I'm really looking for experience. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of young, so <laughs> I'm definitely looking forward to um, just any kind of experience in the role as assistant town clerk and uh, accomplishing whatever you guys need. So. I, I just happen to look at this. Um... American Revolution reenactor. Yes. So I reenact oh. the revolution. All right. <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm a corporal in that. I really love education um, and history. I saw your guys' uh, placard from Thomas Paine. Yeah. I didn't actually know he wrote a poem on the Liberty Tree. So I was out there looking at it. I thought it was really cool. <laughs> um, but yeah. So I got involved with that around 2017, I guess it says on there. I thought it was a little bit earlier. But yeah, that would be right. 2017. So I was 15 years old. Um, so I really love, I used to, I live in Sturbridge. So I used to go to old Sturbridge village all the time oh, okay. and living history really like resonated with me. I loved learning stuff and uh, more kind of hands-on stuff. Mm -hmm. And so the American revolution was kind of the way to go. 
a little bit less political than Civil War. And so, so <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, let me ask you how how do you maintain accuracy and attention to detail when handling sensitive documents? Um, so with handling sensitive documents, I would obviously make sure to double check everything, make sure everything's on my local file, not on like a shared document if it's sensitive, I guess. Um, I'm very computer literate. So I know um, a lot of the different systems. I also know a little bit more about computers. I can go into like the files and stuff and I understand how to change all that kind of stuff. Um, but keeping it safe, yeah, it's definitely a priority. I definitely wouldn't uh, put it on a shared file, I guess, as like I said, and make sure it's saved to the local drive. And then obviously not share that local uh, file or drive with anyone. That would be important. So, Which strategies would do you employ to prioritize and manage multiple tasks? How would you do that? Um, I guess I would do it like I did at school. So if I'm working on different things, I usually like to keep a bunch of different tabs open on my computer and just plug one at a time and make sure that I'm not doing too much at once. Cause if you do too much at once, you're going to make mistakes. So you want to just focus on one at a time and then, you know, do it and whatever it is a priority, but finish whatever you need first and then move to the less important stuff later okay. to make sure you're consistent and not making any mistakes. Okay. We'll see. How would you handle a challenging or irate customer while maintaining professionalism and courtesy? Um, yeah. So I guess while at the mailroom at Suffolk, uh, some people maybe got a little bit impatient because we worked a lot with um the different academic departments there and we would, you know, handle packages and stuff. And sometimes the packages would have hiccups or something. Um, you know, you got to keep in mind, it's not personal to you. They're not angry at you. They're angry at like their situation. Mm -hmm. So you try to empathize with them and understand where they're coming from um, to make them feel heard and like you care about them and respect them while also not taking their anger personally at yourself. Okay. Uh, can you provide an example of a time when you had to resolve a conflict or a disagreement within a team and how did you handle it? Um, okay. So I guess within a team, uh, I guess during my study abroad experience, we had a group project <laughs> Um, and often group projects can get, you know, a little bit intimidating, I guess. They're not intimidating, but people don't always get along. Um, and so usually, like I said before, you know, try to understand where the other person's coming from and then try to reiterate your point of view in the most respectful way. Um, and maybe try to convince them either to join your side or compromise and agree with what they're saying. Um, so I guess... We were working on a project. Um, there was a presentation for an environmental class I was taking there. Uh, I forget the name of the course. But we had to give a presentation and we all kind of had different ideas about where we wanted it to go. But in the end, uh, we didn't have compromising and we kind of had a mix of um, what we wanted to do. And we didn't have compromising and we had different people speak on different things that they were maybe more knowledgeable about. Um, and me, obviously, being an American there, I talked about more American issues while they talked about more Scottish issues. So. Uh, what steps do you take to stay updated on reg relevant regulations or procedures? Um, so how do you stay up to date with uh, things like that? Um, I actually subscribe to a lot of the state house news uh, sources. <laughs> so I like doing that. A lot of my friends uh, who went to Suffolk with me are now all work at the state house. So they also tell me a lot of the inside stuff. I think there's supposed to be an agricultural survey, maybe that you guys have heard about. I don't know. But my friend was sending an agricultural survey to all the town clerks, um, which maybe the state will be giving more money to farmers. So, um, yeah, usually I like to subscribe to the state house news um, and then follow what they say. I noticed um, you were uh, an intern. Was it a summer internship with Senator Gobi? Or? Um, yeah, kind of. Wasn't um, super official, like I wasn't paid or anything okay. for it. Um, because again, I was young at the time, and I wasn't in college, so I was just in high school. Um, but yeah, so I was an intern for uh, Senator Gobi. Um, it must have been 
yeah a year in high school um but the main things i did uh was work on the crumbling foundations issue so a concrete company in connecticut had sold concrete which when exposed to high humidity which we had that summer the concrete would actually crumble and so it was very sad seeing um you know families who invested money to like make sure their house is okay have their foundation start to crack and uh crumble and so it was uh very empowering and actually why i want to get involved with municipal government i'm working on or helping her district um legislate or like her district person work on submitting uh resolutions and stuff for what the actual bill should be and what kind of relief these uh people wanted and it's still held up unfortunately is they haven't they haven't uh given any financial support yet to those homeowners no i thought no and more more of them are crumbling they're now it. and they have to like right pick the, the whole house up and yeah. then repour a foundation around it i saw that on a couple of roads coming in from sterling the houses were sitting up I said, I know what it was. You know what the problem was, but it's still going on. And then um, in addition to that, I also worked um, preparing for the census. Um, so basically, I would compile all the data from the 2010 census, and then we would try to work together to make projections for the 2020 census. And when it came out, uh, I believe they used the data for comparisons, but the data hadn't come out when I uh, left. So. <clears throat> How do you maintain confidentiality when you're dealing with sensitive information? It's confidentiality. So I would ensure you're only talking to the people who I guess are approved to know about it. So I don't know how you guys would go about that in like the office of knowing who's allowed to know what or what kind of records are allowed to be shared. I assume, well, I guess you do on telling me. There are guidelines, <laughs> yeah, state guidelines. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I would have to research the guidelines yeah. and make sure I'm following them. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you guys had like on the paper, it said confidential or something on it, or maybe yeah. that might be something yeah. good to add. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, there, there's some of that, and then there's some that are public record. So there definitely is a, a, a balance between what is confidential and then what is considered public record. And that is all spelled out in uh, lengthy um, documents. Yeah. Can you describe your experience with using software or databases on record keeping and data management? Yes, so I definitely can on data management. Um, so at Suffolk, um, I took a data analysis and politics course, which is all about data and how to analyze it. Um, we used a coding system called R, which I believe is free actually. Um, and it helps run statistical analysis. It'll also store the data and you can chart the data however you want on there, which is really cool. So you can compile all the data you need um, and chart it however you want. And I know how to do all the coding. So that was cool. <laughs> so, yeah. How do you ensure that paperwork and documentation are completed accurately and in a timely manner? Um, so accurately, I would definitely double check, if not triple check everything. Um, usually, um, if you're taking like hard numbers from a paper or something, yeah, I would just double check it or triple check it. Um, and then I would re, I don't know how to describe this. Sorry. I could, can you repeat the question? Yeah. I mean, you've answered it. Double check and triple check. It's not just, you know, you put it in and you're done. You follow up and you ensure yeah. accuracy. Yeah, I guess so. If you're looking at a paper and there's discrepancy during the double check, then you uh, double check it again and just keep double checking until everything looks perfect. Great. Or is perfect. <laughs> Can you discuss your approach on collaborating with other departments or agencies within the local government? Um. Yes. So I would approach it as everybody is doing their own job, right? And so they obviously want to prioritize their own stuff, but you obviously want to be communicative and have very friendly relations with your coworkers. Like you want to be enthusiastic about what you're doing and you want to, you know, hopefully they're enthusiastic about what the work that they're doing too. Mm -hmm. um, so I would just be super friendly, um, you know, maintain professional relationships with everybody and just clear communication, I would say is probably the main thing. 
like you don't want um, them to be confused about what you're asking them. If they have a, if you have a problem and you're coming to them, you don't want them to be confused about the problem or like throw a question their way that they definitely wouldn't know about that you also don't know about. You should try to make sure you know who you're talking to and what they understand and stuff like that. Good. Good. You uh, tell us about a suggestion that you've made that has benefited an organization that you've worked in. Um, yes. So at FlexCon, which is a label oh. adhesive company in Spencer, mm -hmm. um, we were working a lot. So I was in the packing department. Um, and so our goal was to make sure everything was secured to pallets. Well, the label adhesive was secured to pallets and strapped collectively, correctly. So make it across the United States and, you know, to global suppliers. Um, but the main thing that I guess needed improvement was the way we did, um, they organized everything. Everything was kind of loosely organized. <laughs> um, so instead of doing paper manifests where you would paper and then you would have to print out all these slips and you would count it up and stuff and you'd have to count it at the very end, make sure everything matched. It was a lot easier, and I guess I kind of suggested this, that we put it on the scanner gun that we were using. Mm -hmm. So instead of hand counting it, the computer could just do it for us. Mm -hmm. And so that made everything a lot more efficient because you, instead of having to count all the labels that we had, which was the old way, the computer would just tell you how many labels you had, and then you could just see instead of wasting all the time counting. Hmm. Hmm. Imagine that. Efficiencies. <laughs> yeah, by all means. <laughs> What is there about this position that attracts you the most? Um, oh, well, there's a lot, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely excited to learn. Um, and I really want experience. Um, so yeah, I guess the learning part to me is what's so exciting. I love learning, like the reenacting is all about learning. I just love to learn. I love learning new stuff and I really want to help out a local municipality or town achieve their goals. So even if I might not like agree with everything that the voters of Oakham say, I would love to implement to the best of the ability, to the best of my ability, you know, what their wishes are and create the best system that benefits you guys. What would you say are the, your top three skills that make you the best candidate for this position? Well, I'm definitely good with data <laughs> and, um, you know, coding around data and stuff like that. So I'm definitely good with that i'm also very detail oriented i like to make sure everything is you know the way it should be kept confidential if it's confidential um and then lastly um i'm very enthusiastic so i'm very eager to learn i'm very you know happy to be here well i'd be happy to be here working here um i don't know yeah and i love helping people and I think that those two go together. And I feel like I could definitely help a lot of people in the position, so. I'll re-ask the question I asked to the last candidate. Yeah, okay. um, approximately how many hours are you um, hoping to work in a week? Um, and if they were a position, so this is right now a, a per diem as needed. Mm -hmm. And if there were ever a position available, let's say 15 hours a week, on a regular basis, um, is that something you'd be interested in? Yes, I saw on your guys' website that I might be elected, and I don't live in the town, so I don't know if I could do it if it's elected, but if it's appointed, I would definitely be uh, interested in doing it 15 hours a week. And, and as a per, let's say if it's the assistant position, which is not an elected, mm -hmm. um, and it would never be an elected, um, about how many per diem hours would you be hoping to have? As much as possible? Yeah, as much as possible. <laughs> I'm all set. Thank I'm you. Set. I'm all set. Maxwell, thank you very, very much for coming in. All right. Thank you so much for having me. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good rest of your day. You too. Thank you. You too. I think the next one is actually a Zoom one, right? Yes. Yep. Yep. 
15 minutes. 15 minutes. Take a 15 minute break. Okay. You go with that? Yeah, we'll take a 15 okay. minute break. Sarah, are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? I can't. We can't. Oh. oh. You're, but you're sideways. <laughs> oh, there, we go. there 
you go. <laughs> Sorry about that. It would have been entertaining to. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> All right, board of selectmen back in session, 1153. Third and final candidate for assistant clerk. Sarah, we're going to ask you a bunch of questions. Um, <clears throat> just take your time answering them. But before we get started, would you just give us a, a back your background and why you're here? Uh, yes, so I have a pretty diverse work background. Uh, I've done a lot of different things from food service to childcare to education. Um, and I'm here because I'm actually moving to OCAM in about a month now. Yeah, a month. Uh, and I wanted to be a little bit more involved in the town I'm going to live in. Okay, thank you. All right. How would you ensure accuracy and attention to detail when handling sensitive documents or data? Mm, uh, well, just as a starter, if I'm recording everything, I like to read it at least three times just to make sure. I did a lot of that, especially working in education, um, recording things for our records and, and behavioral uh, notes and stuff like that. I just like to triple check everything I can. And if I'm not sure about something, I try to ask um, someone to uh, check as well, just to make sure we have the right information. Okay. What strategies do you employ to prioritize and manage multiple tasks? Uh, it depends on the scenario. I like to, usually if I'm working for someone, I like to ask them what like the top three priorities are and then work down from there. So make sure I'm getting the main things that need to get done before I'm moving on to smaller tasks or subcategories of each task. Uh, it just depends on what we're looking for that day or what needs to get done. Okay, thank you. How would you handle a challenging or irate customer while maintaining your professionalism and courtesy? Oh, uh, something I've done before for sure. Um, <laughs> I, I I like to try and reassure people that I, I hear their frustration and it's, it's perfectly okay to feel that way and that I will do the best that I can to find a solution for them. Um, while also being realistic about sometimes, you know, there is no solution sometimes. Um, unfortunately, you know, maybe something has been misunderstood or um, they were given wrong information. So I, I try to assure people that what they're feeling, if they're angry about something is okay. Um, and I'll just, I'll do the best I can to rectify the situation um, regardless of the circumstances. Can you provide an example of a time when you had to resolve a conflict or a disagreement within a team or with a member of the public? Mm. Definitely, definitely a couple. Um, more than just like food industry, working in education specifically, we definitely, not necessarily conflict, but everyone had a different view on how things should be done. Um, and so... Uh, we've had a couple, I'll, I'll keep it in the, the vaguest terms just for like confidentiality purposes. Um, we had um, some meetings over some behavioral issues we were having with a specific student um, that were really frustrating for everyone. And I know I had two team members who felt very, very differently about how we were supposed to handle the situation. Um, and so what I did in that circumstance was I tried to both in those meetings and also sort of outside them, try to talk to them about like why they were feeling that one way was was wrong and the other way was not. And maybe if they could sort of find a middle ground between the two, just so we could best serve that student and um, keep up a camaraderie between all the members of the team. Uh, what steps do you take to stay updated on relevant regulations or procedures uh, with the job that you're working? Oh, uh, again, depends on the job. Obviously right now I, I nanny, so that's a little bit more insular, um, <laughs> but just in general, um, with a lot of the larger jobs I've worked, I, I check my email daily. 
Um, I check in with coworkers if I know something was going on that we were about to have a change with. Um, as always, I, I try to keep up if there's a handbook or a set of rules or what have you. Um, I make sure I'm updated on that. And if there are any changes, I review them as soon as possible. <clears throat> How do you maintain confidentiality when dealing with sensitive information? That's an interesting one. Um, I've actually uh, worked in certain fields. I did um, newborn photos for a little while, which is lovely. Um, and I actually had to follow the rules of HIPAA while I worked there because I worked in a hospital. Uh, the same goes for education. We have a lot of pretty strict rules on what you can say and what you can't say outside of work. Um, so for the most part, obviously, it goes without saying. I don't discuss workplace situations with people uh, in any sort of detail if I know they're confidential. And as well, if I have something I need to talk about or I need to resolve, I make sure I'm speaking to a coworker who I know is also involved in that situation. So I'm not breaking any sort of confidentiality um, in that regard. Thank you. Can you describe your experience with using software or databases for record keeping and data management? Yes, uh, I've had several instances where we've used different softwares. Uh, I have familiarity with uh, Microsoft products. Um, I briefly worked as a quality control inspector where we would record measurements, um, data changes in items we were manufacturing, uh, requirements for items we were manufacturing. Um, so we used Excel, um, uh, Microsoft Word, things like that. I've also used a lot of um, Google products. So essentially the same, the same version, just, you know, Google Docs, uh, Google Spreadsheets, things like that. I also have some experience in um, Adobe software, more within the realm of uh, photography, editing, things like that. Um, but I've always found it really easy to pick up as well. So I don't typically struggle with newer programs. Okay. Okay. Um, can, how do you ensure that paperwork and documentation are completed accurately in a timely manner? Uh, first and foremost, of course, um, I, I ask how the, um, my manager or, or who else it might be in that case, I make sure I confirm what exactly they want done and how they want things filed or written or whatever else. Um, and then I also make sure just to have things submitted in time. Uh, I know which deadlines are closest, which are furthest, and what's the priority so that I can get those done in the order that uh, best suits the, the needs of the, the workplace. Can you discuss your approach to collaborating with other departments within the local community? Yeah, um, I definitely have a lot of experience with that, especially in education, um, just because I worked in all departments, uh, kinder through eighth. Uh, I try to approach everyone just as friendly as possible, as kindly as possible, especially if I am speaking to a department that maybe I don't have that much experience with, um, just because I, I never want to assume I know more than someone who's, whose job it is to do a specific thing. Um, and just generally, I, I try to be really friendly and approachable and, and listen as much as I can. Sarah, can you tell us about a suggestion that you've made that has benefited an organization you've worked for? Yeah. Um, a couple that come to mind uh, more recently um, I worked, um, well in education, I worked in special education, um, and I actually, for a classroom for the fourth, fifth, I made a couple suggestions in the layout of the room and the way the desks were arranged, just because we were experiencing some, some behavioral issues between specific students, um, and I was really happy. It actually, uh, it helped a lot, and it helped some of those conflicts diminish or totally disappear. Um, so I was, I was really pleased with that. I was glad it worked. Thank you. 
what is there about this position that really entices you and attracts you the most? Oh, um, partly, I would say it is kind of what I mentioned before. Uh, I'll, I'll be living at OCAM, and I've not really been involved in my community too much up to this point, um, but I've definitely wanted to. So I like the idea of that and just being able to be helpful for the place I live, uh, as well as I always like learning new things and trying out new things. So it is similar to jobs I've had, but not exactly the same. And I, I definitely um, would look forward to sort of learning more about that. Um, Sarah, what would you say are your top three skills that make you the best candidate for this position? Hmm. Um, I would say it is that I am organized. Uh, I work really well on my own. Um, and I have fairly good customer service skills, so I'm good at interacting with people, speaking to people. I've been told I put people at ease pretty easily, so I think those three skills. Okay. So um, this uh, position that you've applied to is a per diem position. Um, uh, about how many hours would you be hoping to have uh, in a week um, if a, uh, another position with maybe more hours, uh, let's say 15 were to come up, is that something that you would be interested in? Um, I believe, uh, I just wanna clarify, I think I was told this position would probably be like one to five a week depending, was that okay? Yeah. Um, yeah, so at least for the 15 hours, I think I probably wouldn't be able to take on that just because I, I will be working an additional job outside of this if I do have this position. Yeah. Um, so it would just, it would make things a little bit tricky. Um, yeah. And, and just so you know, that's not, that's not a wrong answer. It was just the, if a position in the future were to come up. So that's, uh, that's fine. Yeah. No, no, I think everything went well. Sarah, do you have any questions for us? Yeah, uh, I was actually a little bit curious just about the nature of um, whether this is independent work, sort of work from home or in person. I'm just trying to figure out how it would work um, with my, my um, main job. Say ninety nine percent of it's going to have to be here at the town hall because you're going to be interacting with citizens. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And then there's there's a state computer um, that information is entered in. So um, you get they mm -hmm. send out daily or month, yearly census and information is entered into this system when people register to vote. I believe it's entered into that mm -hmm. particular system. Yep. Um, um, so really, I think it is definitely in, in person. You have to be here to keep up with all the changes mm -hmm. that make to with the systems. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. All right. That answers my question. Um, I think outside of that, uh, I'd be curious to know, I always like to ask people, what's your favorite thing about working there? <laughs> um, so we're volunteers, essentially. We do get a, an annual stipend. Um, I think if you average all the hours, though, um, we, we give money back. Um, but um, uh, I, I think it's about the uh, same reason you're interested in this position, uh, being part of your community and giving back to your community in some way. Um, and so it's having that opportunity for me. I just like being able to handle many different opportunities in the town, many different boards to work with, but all kinds of different people with different interests. And I just enjoy working with the people. Uh, I too, I, I'm retired, but I'm retired from municipal government, I've been in municipal government 42 years, uh, 30 of that uh, manager, managerial capacity. And I just felt that I could give more to my town with my background. You know, seeing that I've been on the other side. So it's worked out pretty well. 
Anybody have anything else? No, no, I don't have anything, anything else, else, Sarah. Uh, I think that was about all the questions I had. Okay. Well, we appreciate you coming in and talking with us, and we will yeah, be in thank touch. You. Nice meeting thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Nice to meet you. Nice meeting you too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Anybody have anything else on the interviews? Nope. This is on the agenda for Tuesday. Discussion appointment. And right now, have we officially closed um, on Indeed, right? Did we close this one on Indeed or was it even on Indeed? I don't think this one was okay. on Indeed. Okay. No. no. But I, I'm I'm comfortable that um, with the, between these three applicants, there would be no need for... Um, Additional Other interviews. Yeah. I agree. Yep. Right, next on the agenda is the Maya 2020 Public Official Liability and Law Enforcement and Professional Liability. They have not been filled out, but I just wanted to bring them to the board to make sure that. Oh, these but, are the uh, questionnaires. Yeah, yeah. Every year. Yeah. These are the usual questionnaires. Your usual, yeah. yeah. So we should authorize these to be filled out. Are these, um, is that online? No, you can show it to Aaron. Okay. Give, I've never seen that. those before. No. Oh, yeah. If you want to hand them that so you can look at it. Oh, that's right. you I can forward it to you. It can be scanned. We can use Adobe. <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine some of this progressive <laughs> thought? Uh, <laughs> it's the future. You'll notice they're very policy conscious. In those areas. I know. But how do we answer them? <laughs> no. The best. <laughs> Working on it. Okay. Um, they don't expect yeah. everything, but. Yeah, I'd be interested to see what the results are um, from the questions. Um, and then I'd also be interested to see, um, I don't really know anything about Maya. Is it possible to get like a, a meeting with them to understand what our Maya relationship is i know when i was at the mma conference they had like a maya breakfast or something um and i was like if you were a member you could go but i didn't get any information on it so i was not sure 100 percent if we were members um but like it that's a elect public official liability i'm curious what that actually covers uh, i can show you the policy yeah i'd love to i mean if there are other policies online um, Those wouldn't be online. No. Those are right from the insurance. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 But you know, for next year or for September, they do come out. Oh, do they? At least twice, and they go the first time they come out with the new policy for the new year coming in. They go through everything. They go through just about every page and say, "This is the same as you had last year, but this is our change for this year." So they're quite detailed yeah. when they do that. And I rep just retired so there will be a new, a new rep. person but the other person we worked with retired also didn't he that was for the he was the liability the, the on liability collision and it, yeah. all that um yeah yeah so he was more uh he did to retire yeah. but joanne who's been she's done all the surrounding towns at the at the meeting on monday i sat next to the <sighs> executive director of maya from framingham i guess um, and, uh, he talked about, you know, the insurance state right now. And, um, uh, right now it seemed to have leveled off, um, talked about the health insurance situation where we basically have two options in Massachusetts This one point, which is Tufts and Harvard Pilgrim and Blue Cross Blue Shield. Mm -hmm. Um, some towns had 2% increase in, in health insurance up to 
I think a little bit under 10. And I think we were probably closer to the nine. Yeah. Yeah. We're um, which depending upon who you have as employees, that number, well, it the depends risk on your claims. Yeah. They review your claims every year and that's where they base that off of. Now with Maya, if the claim is going up, say 15%, they have backup funds to offset that. Mm -hmm. So they would bring it down to a more of a level. Nice. Level nice. thing. And that's why we advocated to go to Maya. Yeah. Because um, if you go out on your own, you don't have that. Yeah. No. Right. And if you go to the other health insurance company like Rutland did, they don't have any backup either. So they're rolling the dice. Yeah. But the Maya, is that purchase Blue Cross? Is it a Blue Cross? Blue Cross, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. yeah. It's actually the same insurance that they had under Quabbin. Quabbin. It's just under the... It's a different policy yeah. set up. But yeah. But and... overall, their, their insurance wasn't drastically changed but it should be the actual it's benefits the same thing. yeah and haven't changed but yes that's we have the more benefit. control over it now than, right right than you had before I and maya is all a municipal and so that's mm -hmm. nice to have that okay yeah oh it does say my insurance policy i wonder if that's coverage yeah from december yeah so i would move that we authorize the um, board of selective selectmen administrative assistant to complete those um, forms. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> it's a uh, treasurer collector payroll. No, that was me. Okay. Well, I know that the treasurer collector informed the board a little while back that she did. He, um, the wages in her line item were depleted and wouldn't be enough to cover her pay for the remainder of the year. So it's come to that point. So currently right now, I think there's $630 left in the um, account, which will not cover this pay period fully mm -hmm. and then anything moving forward. Um, I asked Wendy to just, uh, if she can do a little breakdown, it just, so she's saying it needs seven warrants um, at 30 hours a week, plus adding some additional hours, which she calculated. A pay period. Per pay period. Yeah, sorry, per pay, yeah. pay period. But an additional 26 hours for one week because of the audits. The audits, yes. Um, both the, and the financial review. Yeah. Uh, so a total of $10,620 deducting the $630.12 that she has there. So a grand total of $9,989.88. So she rounded it up just to an even $10,000 is what probably would be needed to cover the remaining of the fiscal year. <clears throat> and clearly the 26 hours is an estimate. If it's less, obviously, you know, yeah, that would be bad. better. But she just figured... Um, so the question is, where would that come from? I know she has um, one outstanding bill that she's covering. So I don't know. I don't think she uh, has a whole, I don't know if she has anywhere else to pull from. Can you pull the latest report from the accountant? I think it was the March. Yep. Expenditures. Expenditures. Let's see what the balance in the Medicare account is can we transfer that in april may first may first may but she don't have enough money for this pay well, this well, at least two warrants because we got another warrant in just more we got this one and we and have yeah. another one in april yeah i mean since it's a wage and hour issue is the account able to deficit i don't know i can't imagine we can legally not pay but right we can't I don't see why she can't. Yeah, knowing that we're going to do a transfer May first, mm -hmm. it'd be different if we had nowhere to go. Right, right. right. <clears throat> see, um, Lori, right, Lori. March expenditure. Okay. Um. We're looking for treasure. No, what are we looking for? Yeah, uh, it's under the treasure. Yeah, it's treasure, under the treasure, treasure collector. but it's uh, with the health insurance and the benefits. that line item. 
treasurer collector. So we got contracts, payroll, bond, education, um, wages, salary. It was toward the bottom. Contracts. Treasure foreclosure. Could be coming up. Um, Um, conservation, town hall, municipal building. No, I think it was housing, county retirement, health insurance, Medicare, health services, quality assessment. Cemetery. Treasurer debt principal expenditures, treasurer debt, uh, short term interest borrowing, cherry sheets, motor vehicle tax. We might be getting close. Employee benefits. Yep. Um, so there's treasurer, employee benefits, Worcester County retirement, unemployment. Group insurance, is that the one? Uh, keep going as Medicare. Town share Medicare? Yep. We've got 37% left. Um, it says available 23,000. And that's as of March. 37% left, you said? 37.4% uh, mm -hmm. um, and available is seven thousand. Uh, thousand four hundred and eighty one dollars sorry seven thousand four hundred and eighty one is left thirteen thousand is available in uh, group insurance yeah we're going to expend all of that that's mm -hmm. pretty much close to the penny yeah um, we have if we have seven there we have three thousand in unemployment yep there's 10,000 mm -hmm. that can be transferred May 1st. Mm -hmm. They doubt we're going to get any unemployment. Although the fraudulent claim, mm -hmm. don't we have to pay that? Pay. Yeah, but. I mean, what are they going to do? She yeah. didn't, she's not paying. Yeah, it. good. I, I don't think we should. No. What are they going to do? Fine us? No. Not paying it. So there is money there we have to ship from one account mm -hmm. to the other in May. If not, it'd be a reserve fund transfer. That's what reserve is for. I don't think we should use ARPA um, when we have the reserve fund. No. So. And the reason some of this has gone over is because we had a change mm -hmm. in treasurers. Mm -hmm. um, partial part of it was <clears throat> the old treasurer left July 6th, uh -huh. which was the new fiscal year. So we owed the vacation time, mm -hmm. the new fiscal year. We had to pay that out. No additional funds were put in for FY24 right. because we didn't know she was leaving. So if we had known that, we could have planned it. Did we have a contract too or no? Mm -hmm. We had a contract in the interim for maybe four or five weeks. Yeah, probably at a higher rate. At a higher rate. He was doing the clerical yeah, and we yeah. made the adjustment yeah. to compensate for that. So there was a mm -hmm. more, more money used. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when we negotiated the new one's salary was higher than the old one. So we knew we were coming into the situation. This is not a shock. Right. We know right. this. Yeah. Um, just one of those things when you have somebody leave in mid year like this. And not to mention you have somebody new coming in who has to learn all yes. of that. Even though they're a certified collector treasurer, they've got to learn this procedure right. here. And, different, and different normally different. you have overlap. Yes. So you'd be paying two people right. for at least, should be two weeks at least. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the whole thing with succession plans. Yeah. You know, these municipalities don't get it. Yeah, we, we budget yeah. so tight. 
that it we doesn't do. allow for any flexibility. Right. Not much. Um, so I, I would say you can use what's left in the uh, medical. Medic, uh, the um, Medicare. Is it Medicare and uh, unemployment. unemployment? So seven and three. Yeah, it's two thousand nine hundred forty-six seventy-six. Two thousand nine hundred forty-six seventy-six is unemployment, and town share Medicare is seven thousand four hundred eighty-one sixty-four. Which will be over ten thousand, I think. Yeah. Is that the balance left? Yes. How much? How often are we using that's, this? That's what I'm thinking. Um, the, the unemployment we won't use, right. but the town chair Medicare that's still going to draw down for the rest of the year. So what have we expended already? Uh, already? We've expended. Year to date, one. Let's see, we've expended year to date twelve thousand five hundred and eighteen dollars okay. and thirty six cents of a budget of twenty thousand. So we're averaging about thirteen hundred dollars a month. Twelve seventy two forty eight uh, is for the period. There you go. June. Yeah. So that's uh 12, 24, 36. Like reserve fund. It'd be easier just, just to yeah. just to get a lot of all of it. I would just take the whole thing out of yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I would move that we request that um ten thousand dollars be uh requested to be transferred uh, from the reserve fund to cover um ten thousand dollars in treasurer collector wages to complete the fiscal year second oh Eva. hi hi and we'll request that to go to the finance committee <laughs> we'll leave they're aware of this yes previous discussion yes. Yeah. yeah yeah i think alan is anyway it's not, a, not a shock to them Okay, next up we have the highway superintendent interview discussion, possible vote. Three applicants. Three interview applicants. One went through or two went through? Two went through. Two went through. We have three. Any initial thoughts from anybody? Um, I think uh, for me, after watching all of it, I went back to um, the job description, looked at what we are um, looking for, um, reflected on the fact that we've had two highway superintendents probably a long time. Um, we regularly say and hear that our roads are 
good, great compared to other communities. The best. Um, we can always count on being able to get out of OCAM and then you get stuck somewhere else oh, over the line. Um, and, you know, why is that? Um, I would say it's been leadership, competency, confidence, um, management that has likely been part of that. Um, and those are, we don't want to have our roads go the wrong direction. We don't want to have revolving doors of employees. I think we've been pretty steady of um, who's worked here over the years. Um, and um, we've gotten grants. Our, our chapter 90, as far as I'm aware, has never had any issues. Um, and so then I look at the three, the three candidates and who can lead, who can manage, who can ensure our grants don't go uh, in the wrong direction, uh, that our budgeting doesn't go in the wrong direction. Um, and uh, it's a wasp, I think, <laughs> um, probably through the hole. Mm -hmm. um, let's put a piece of paper up there to hold it. Um, so um, I think, uh, Honestly, I believe out of the three, only one of them had a uh, supervisory experience, um, managing staff, um, and, and for me, that's the number one thing that I want to make sure that whoever is in that position can manage, can lead, and we'll be able to do the job of the higher level, not just plowing, not just doing mechanics, because we don't have anybody else in OCAM that um, does chapter 90. You know, it should be responsible for doing the budgets. Um, and, um, it's not an on the job training um, to become a manager uh, and to oversee what I think is $350,000 budget. Um, and we're responsible for making sure that I think that's like the biggest department financially. It is. Um, <clears throat> it definitely and is. we're accountable to the taxpayers that we are putting someone in that position who is going to be in charge, um, uh, at least be able to be responsible, answer the tough questions, set a vision, um, enunciate that vision. Um, and um, so, uh, and I, so out of the three um, right now, um, I would only be able to find one that would um, meet that criteria. For my <clears throat> for myself, at this particular moment, after looking at all three candidates, they all brought a certain strength, but they also, to me, brought certain weaknesses. And I would feel more comfortable having a second go at interviewing them and maybe changing some other questions that I would want to ask and see. And I would actually like to do a second interview. If you want to choose two out of the three that were the strongest, that would be fine. I would like to see, to do the, the interview on site. I would like the applicants to be able to see exactly what it is they're going to be working with before they make their decisions as well. And I'd like to see a little more input from some of the applicants. I, I was a bit disappointed because after the interviews we had today, I liked because they all had questions for us. 
our applicants for highway had no questions for us, for the town or anything. And I, I found that to be a little bit unusual. Nobody asked what equipment we had, how we'd sand salt our roads, where the culverts were. I mean, they didn't ask anything specific. <laughs> I would have liked to have seen that from their perspective. I, I can agree with the second round of interviews to get a little more in depth, with, but I do not agree with cutting it to two. We've only got three and two of them are very close, you know, with background stuff. So I would say <clears throat> bring all three of them back up there at the highway. Are we able to zoom up at the highway? Yeah, can, okay, yeah. that, that was my one concern yeah, was, yeah, we can, can we do it, do it by phone or yeah. however? I would just suggest um, that because we're the public body, maybe Kevin do a tour of, or one of us with Kevin do a tour of the equipment. We hang out in the, the room where the zoom is yeah. and then they come in and that's when the meeting the interviews begin yeah. Um, or yeah, yeah or we switch off one I don't know we probably don't want to do one with a, each candidate but because uh, then you're really getting one extra perspective no. um, but yeah I think um, having somebody go over it with them uh, in a public forum or not in a public forum um, would be better and then we come together yeah. um, but I do think you know as I did you know this is a big decision it's a huge decision i mean 60 years of of experience essentially with i think two people yeah um and um so we've got to make sure we have ranked what is it that we believe is most important in the candidate um and i really feel like that's what we have to make the decision based upon um is, oh i agree is uh, i agree what do we need um, so I don't know how we do that and because we don't want to, you know, do that today and then give everybody uh, a week to, um, watch the video and go, yeah. okay, that's what they're looking for, <laughs> yeah, for answers. True. So I think we would have to really come to that meeting with that and then discuss it. We can each write our own questions yeah. down and. Yes. Not share them. Share them. Yep. Yeah. And just go into the meeting and then we'll just read Because right now, questions. after having had the interview and them not asking questions, I have yes. a little more questions right. now that yeah. I want to ask them to get a little more specific details from some of them. And I specifically for one of them, I have more detailed questions. And as long as we're all asking each candidate the same question. Yes. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. That's fair. Yeah. So. I would also like to suggest, at least as we're going through the site visit, I want to include the office as well, because the people who don't live in town that are applying have no idea what that municipal building even looks like. Right. It'll give them a chance to get a feel for it, and maybe they won't like it. I don't know. I mean, and honestly, if if Kevin were able to meet with them, I think it would be at any point right. between now and the interviews. But then we have our scheduled interview day. Mm -hmm. So I don't necessarily know that we have to necessarily meet up there if they've already done their tour, since we're not going to be necessarily part of it. They want to do it that way. Yeah. Have them meet individually with Kevin. It's a possibility. Yeah. Um, but I just think it's important for Kevin to be there to yeah. explain the paperwork because I know I can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And I don't think any of us have done Chapter 90 or any of the state no. funding. No, not that. So, I think they need to see all of that because they were not all yeah. Yeah. conversed with that. And, and I would, um, I'm comfortable doing the three, in, inviting all three. Mm -hmm. um, but I wonder if we could do it at six o'clock, uh, a six o'clock meeting night. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And um, the sun will be out, so that'll be fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but. It, it may mean that more people from the community will come, but we do need to, it is an interview, an interview so. and it, it's not public comment. No, no, and no. Um, 
but at least people will be able to see the exchange and and that we've put a lot of effort into um, making the right the best decision we can for OKIM. Yep. Yep. And I would try to get it up within the next week if possible. Um, might be tight. Oh well, we don't have a need. We don't have a meeting the following Monday night. We do now. So maybe <laughs> if we could schedule our interview the following Monday night, and they have next week. Yeah. The twenty second. Is that what you mean? 22nd. Are we going to cease the every week meetings? Well, not till we're actually presenting the budget to Finco. <laughs> Check your emails today. There's some. I am not. And I was opening I up my answer. computer and somebody said, oh. it's time to go now. There's some so questions. I came in. Gotta... Yeah. And there was an email just so you know. I don't know if the board saw from the current superintendent. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I saw that. Yep. Yeah. So until we sign off on the budget and give it to them, I think our meeting, we should just go over things. Yeah. And we still have the article that we're waiting from town council. The articles we need to really pay attention to. And if we can keep it to the Monday or Wednesday, I'm okay. Um, those are uh, I'm available protected, um, just not uh, the first week of May. I'm not available. I'm going to be in Florida. The sixth through the. So we could tentatively put it on the 22nd. Yeah. Okay. And how many questions? I, and you know what? We were also a little time crunched. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, sure. I think, you know, maybe there was a little pressure of, okay, I know there's someone else coming in right after me. Um, so we probably do want to schedule, I don't know, 30 minutes might be okay since it's the second round. Second time. Um, but um, how many yeah. questions do you think? We, so this was 12 questions today. And I think it was nine questions for the highway. Yeah. yeah. And it was about 20 minutes each. Um, no, we did half hours. No, I mean, I well, think they actually, took, yeah. actually they actually took 20 minutes, but we gave them 30. 30. Mm -hmm. We'll do the same thing. Give them Three 30. questions yeah. each. Three questions. Yeah. But the only risk that we run into is we may end up coming up with the same three questions. Um, I have a couple like, extras. Like this? Or like if, if we, each of us is coming up with questions and not um, sharing them. Okay. Um, well, we can share our questions. Okay. Okay. That's uh, meeting prep stuff. Okay. So we submit it to Maribel as our, yeah, our questions. Um, and then Maribel can. Say, oh, that's a duplicate. Can you come up with another one? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. And and if we could, I'd love to have that before the weekend um, to know what our questions are going to be. This weekend? No, no, no. Next. Thank you. Um, <laughs> no, I'm trying to balance my uh, work-life balance. Oh, yeah. oh, good. Good for you. Good for you. Um, so, no, next weekend. <laughs> By next Friday night. I was thinking, this is, this is Friday already, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yes. No, that would be fine. I, I could agree with all of that. So that would be fine. 422-24 for the second round of interviews for all three candidates at 6 p.m. Yep. yep. At the? Here. Here. Oh, right. Yep. But you'll reach out to Kevin and let him know that we're asking him to make himself available. Yes. Flexible. So am I going to set that up with the candidates to meet with I think, can they just connect? Yeah, I was going to say, have them connect with Kevin. Okay. They can get their own schedule. And, and, and by, to report back to you so that we know that all three of them are set. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And if you could do that to... Yeah. So that obviously yeah. you would want so that done prior to Kevin the second. For all three of them to go at the same no, time? No, 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 no. If like let's say one's uh, available on Tuesday, one's available right. on Thursday. Um, so by the time we meet with them, they will have already done their site yes. visit. So yep. we won't have to worry about Zoom then. No, because we can do it here. We'll do it, do it yeah. here. Come yeah. back. And that yeah. would be There's that would make it much easier. Yeah. Yeah. That would Work be fine because it's like setting up a time to come in. 
Oh, actually, this meeting will be in the evening. So yeah, I want to... and I mean, I, I think Kevin is invested. And so I'm sure he can, he'd be willing to, if it was a five o'clock for yeah. 20 minutes to meet with somebody after on the way home from work or, right. Right. Um, but I think it's a really good idea. Let him see it, let them ask him questions. Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe they'll have questions. Well, yeah, I was gonna say that. Yeah, what did you learn? What do you, what would you improve? Like what new equipment would you get? Because that was that was going to be one of my questions. Okay, you have seen everything that we have. Yeah. If you are chosen, what's the first thing you want to buy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And maybe you know, drive around the town, um, and oh, that, look at the yeah. culverts and look at the bridges. Yeah. Um, That's what I expected from them before they came here to do a little background work yeah. on the town that you want to work for and work with. Mm -hmm. know something about it and that's why I asked them all of well I didn't one of them I didn't have to because I know he knows all the roads but two of them I know did not know the roads and I asked you know yeah. did you have a chance to go out and look at the roads and see what they are and neither yeah. one of them had yeah so assuming all three are able and willing to do this um the only thing they I'm thinking they might not because that means they, they've been here once. They're going to go with Kevin. And then they've got to come back again. That would make three times for them. Okay. I mean, for me, me if they're interested in the job, they'll do it. Do they want the job? Right. If they right. want the job, they'll do it. I think so. I think they will. Um, and, and we want somebody who's willing to put a little bit of extra. Yes. Because it, this is a 24-7 job. Exactly. That's what they have exactly. to understand. And, that they're on call no matter what. So this is a little bit of a taste of... Yep what it will be like. Um, but, you know, I also looked at the area and all the other positions that are open. Um, so that's why I'm not at this point interested in reopening it um, because I don't know that we're gonna get Any, anybody another different. set of three yeah. candidates. Yeah. Or Creel just hired. I yeah. saw that, yeah, yeah. But it was since, December over a year. Okay. Yeah, you said it was. They had a consultant or an interim. Well, yeah, the interim was the retired one from Rutland. And they had, I think, they still have two, like a foreman and a laborer. Yeah, two other Hardwick has two openings. Uh, I think Rutland has. Yep. Yeah. So. Hobbitson's been advertising over a year. And the pool of possible workers is getting smaller. In every municipal job. Yep. In every way. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 So, okay. So I think timely, time is of the essence in uh, connecting. Yes. You want them before next winter. Yes. <laughs> okay. I just thought of something. The highway budget with the contracted plowing that item hasn't been touched really okay, so no that's for outside plows oh so we didn't have to use outside? we didn't use no, it we've got no. ten thousand sitting there didn't have to training for because right now we don't have a budget so i was thinking yeah may 1st you can transfer that mm -hmm. up so you have an overlay mm -hmm. training yeah I think that needs to be the plan. We can't have somebody start July 5th. No, no. Because <laughs> we have to know enough to let them notify their employers yeah. right now that yeah. they're leaving in one week, two weeks. Mm -hmm. And then when are we going to get them to so they can train a little bit Yeah. and pay them? Because you're going to yeah. have to pay them during training. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Oh, no. The board have any new business? No. No. I don't think I don't I don't know. Know. Any old business? Yes. Do you, you want to bring it up? I don't know what you're bringing up. Oh. <laughs> I have a, two things. Uh, <laughs> give it the easy one first. So, so the easy one, this is open still till 5 p.m., the warrants, the article requests. Uh, but today is the deadline at 5 p.m., 
And so far, these are the ones that have been received. Um, I just got two this morning from the Board of Assessor's Office. Um, there's a couple from the Police Department, <clears throat> from a couple from Fire Highway. The usual. Is it from Finicon? Oh, uh, two from Finicon, yeah. Six thousand dollars for the assessors reevaluation stabilization, yeah. which we do yeah. every year. I think next year is the reeval. FY twenty five, yeah. yeah. And <clears throat> they're looking. Bincom wants to start a uh, center school stabilization fund for the repairs. Mm -hmm. We know that's going to be expensive, but yes. you can get a jump on it. Fifteen thousand. Okay, that's good. Oh, it's a start anyway. Have we had any luck um, scheduling um, somebody to go look at the boiler? No, I actually left a message, um, so I'll follow up with that. Okay. Um, we'll try the two inspectors in town and anybody else that I can. Yeah. Three are fire, highway, and police, and they're all the same thing. Okay. So they're asked for the same one thing? They were asking for the town to adopt the retiree insurance law. Okay. All three departments are okay. requesting. Resoundingly. Okay. So they, yeah. Well, they all have full time employees. Yeah. So they, uh, do they have the proper wording and everything for it? Well, they've got the statue. Yeah. <laughs> so, that was on last year's yeah. warrant. Yeah. So, uh, Fire also has a um, revolving fund account. Yeah. To uh, permit fees would be assist in paying for training. Mm -hmm. Great. So, so, on this, um, uh, the finance ones, it says to use free cash. So the free cash that right now would be a negative, well, we would exhaust. We don't know if he included that already. Okay. Get asking that. Otherwise. It's a negative. Okay. Okay. I expected something but, different from this department. Like I said in that meeting, budget does not have to be balanced. Right. Right. Okay. 2025. Okay. And special town meeting with additional point. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, I expected something different on a, one of them. Who's the time and hang up with you? Oh, maybe I looked on it. It might be. Purchase a replacement, a new cruiser. A new cruiser. The police upon a capital stabilization account. I don't think it has enough money in it. I believe it's 33000 in that. And whatever we put in this year. And whatever, that's it, whatever we put in for Was this it 15 year. a year? 11. 11. It's 11. 11. Bincom suggested at one of our meetings that we bump it to 15 because the cost of those things right. are going up. But we haven't decided on that. Okay. Because the eleven was based on the interest that they they were charged when they used to lease when they leased them, yeah. The vehicles. Yeah. Now that they're not leasing them, they're just saving the interest mm -hmm. on it. The board of assessors want to adopt section of the law to authorize the assessors to grant real and property tax abatements up to a hundred percent members of the National Guard and reservists that are on active duty. Is that um, that adoption of a new one or is that the up to 100% because it was only 50%? Doesn't say. Because there was one something I read about going from 400 to 800. 
that's for probably, veterans. That's probably they have to adopt the law first. Yeah. Okay, maybe that's the second one. Yeah, yeah that one. So four hundred to eight hundred. Okay, so then. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's the veterans one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what they put in the budget. Yeah. And this is to adopt the law. Period. Right, and there are other laws out there for abatements that um, yeah. we don't currently have, which I wish they would look at. Right. I was talking with Diane about that this morning when she stopped in. Like the seniors, <laughs> the volunteering. Yes, yes. And, work on. Yeah, and if we're going to continue to have increasing house values, we won't have any seniors living in Oak Kim. Um, so... And then we're going to have McMansions um, with uh, lots of kids and not enough tax base to support them. So it'll be like every other town in the county. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. yes, yes. Yeah. How do they come up with an estimate of um, cost for? Um, the new uh, abatement for the National Guard. I think we only, I'm only aware of one who's uh, currently in Guard. Do they have to come, they must have to come up with a budget number. Well, yeah. Um, don't you have a list of all the veterans? There, the town clerk has a list of all yeah, the, the she veterans. Does. Yeah. yeah, there's quite a few. But it's active duty National Guard Reserve would get a 100% abatement. Yeah. yeah, I think that was one. Yeah. Because I think on, on our list of veterans, I think it's something like 125. Okay. Some of them, of course, have since passed. Mm -hmm. I don't think we've really replaced any. They, they are just diminishing mm -hmm. in number. <clears throat> We didn't take a vote to place those, so right. Just accepting for a future meeting to place. Mm -hmm. I don't want anybody to think we're placing it. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, it's technically still open, so yeah. Um, That's right. It is. It's up to our discretion to use any of them, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So if we had a question on one or two of them. It would take a vote of the board to say, yes, we'll put that on, or no, we won't yep. put that on. Yep. But do they still have time, though, to do a citizen's petition? Sure. We haven't set the warrant. The warrant. Okay. Yeah, they, sh they should have, yeah. Yeah. Um, what was the other thing? It was the uh, contract for the... A website with revise. I know Aaron did. So we got the, as you know, the grants. Aaron did a lot of the footwork in um, getting the quotes between Civic Plus, which is what we currently have, revise and Munibit. Um, Munibit didn't have what the town required and offered, so they were right off the table. And so then it was between revise and Civic Plus. Um, we were under the impression that revise was had a uh, state contract bid so you could proceed with them being still the, a little bit of the higher cost it wasn't that much more but it was still higher long story short is that after all that they do not have a state contract bid they were what they provided was showing that they are vendored a vendor on combines but they don't have the contract bid so therefore that's null and void we cannot follow that because we have to follow the proper procurement which i did provide the account of the three quotes that we already Mm -hmm. had received and revised would be the highest bidder. I explained that Munibit didn't have what we needed, so that's off the table, but still is still higher than Civic Plus, which can offer what we need. It might not be what the layout we want, but the, the scope of work. So that's where we stand at. So that has to be kind of not followed. Um, I did speak with or through email with Sean from me, um, Revise, and he, you know, understood. And I told him I would let him know how things will proceed. Okay. Mm. So can we 
uh, do a side-by-side -side comparison of all of the features to make sure that we're, let's say in one of them, make sure the other one has that feature and we're being charged for it. And then say, hey, you don't have that feature, add that um, and then see where the prices come down. Because they don't all have, they don't both have the same amount of features. The Revise has more features than right. Civic Plus. Right. What we need to do is set out a, like if we were going to bid the yep. same type of yep. procedure, do the specs that we're looking for, present it to those companies. So do a say, bid instead. Give me a price based on what we want. Mm -hmm. And this is what we want. Yeah. And see how they come in. From yeah. There. And a bid is required over 50? 50. Right, but it would still you would still fall under the three quotes. So I think you just need to know exactly the scope of work you want and just right. get the quotes on both companies for the exact same yeah. thing, right? I'm talking quotes. I yeah. Said, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, but, right, because I'm like, we don't need to go to bid. Yeah. yeah. So you just want to get the specifications of the scope of work. So if this one, you know, offers A, B, and C, yeah. you want to get the same a, B, and C for from uh, the other one and yeah. then line it up. Yeah. yeah. So which well, is so, kind of doing the comparison, yeah. making yeah. sure. They each have the same. Back right. out. Yeah. As long as we can get our agendas up and stamped. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. And um, the only time thing we're up against is the uh, quarterly. You do have to extend a quarter each time. Yeah. Uh, with our existing old platform. Yeah. Um, so, um, okay. But the new stuff is under the grant. Yeah. Yep. So, so I will. Um, have to figure out all the details in what we're looking. Yeah, for, exactly what we're looking for. And then just get new quotes with yep. the new date. So it looks like it's a new, you know, you don't want to get a new quote from one and an old one from, but we still need three. Oh, you're going to need three. Yeah. yeah. So we send it to me a bit again. Yeah. yeah, you can't just assume it has you have to have or another company if you know of. Okay. Or take what you just said, send it to Combines. They will put it on the state website and then you you opened up to Oh where like, people can go in and go in and say, okay, this town is looking for X, Y, and Z. Hey, I'll put a bid on that. I'll, and I'll, you can do that if it's under the fifty. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And who knows, you may end up with ten or twenty yeah. different companies saying, Well, we can do it for this. Mm -hmm. Hmm. You know. Okay. So just a little bump. Yeah. Um, and then other old business. Another bump. Um national grid. <laughs> so we started this the beginning of March. Uh by calling. Maribel was on the phone trying customer service, mm -hmm. no response. I got different numbers. Verizon, yeah. no yeah. response. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I finally emailed saying I was a municipal government, wanted to talk to the municipal liaison, no response. Um, did it again, maybe a week later, finally got somebody who said, call this number, community connections, the other ones that do mm -hmm. it. So I called them. And they said, okay, well, email this person and you'll be all set. Put in an order. So I put in an order, crickets. So last week I said, oh, and then finally somebody wrote, I just checking to make sure it was like to eight people. Did you all see this email? Crickets. So I wrote back last Friday saying this grant is due in a week. Um, we're a small rural community. This is all being volunteer done. Can you please get back to me? And yesterday at three o'clock, I got a call <laughs> saying, you realize this can't just be done overnight. <laughs> I said, do you realize we've been trying to get you for over a month? Mm -hmm. And um, and then she picked up the phone, called somebody else. Like while I was on the phone, I had no idea. I was like, are you talking to me? Um, and then she called Phoenix while I was on the phone. And they're like, well, how many polls? And do you have a picture? I'm like, I said, I can go count. No, it's not worth it. Um, so 
um, they're on storm duty and do you know the inconvenience this is? And um, I said, okay. Do they realize we pay the bill? Uh, yeah, and, yeah. And, <laughs> and that we, when they want to put in a poll because mm -hmm. guess who they have to come to? Mm -hmm. um, but so they agreed that by 11 o'clock last night, they'd send me a proposal of worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. Made a, a guess of how many polls, even though I offered to go drive it. Um, they guessed we had 55 polls. We have 24, by the way. Um, and the estimate was $450,000 for the permits and potential tree cuttings and uh, moving of lines and it just for national grid. And oh, by the way, what you were told that it was not Verizon, Verizon also co-owns the polls. Oh. Um, so called Blythe at eight o'clock last night because I had another meeting after the Board of Health meeting I was on. And we agreed that, we, that the 450 was completely unrealistic. It was never gonna cost $450,000. They could run every single street in this town and we might hit 450. Mm -hmm. So we put in for a hundred thousand dollars into the grant request. I told her that I think I originally had estimated in my head from, from ARPA, if we were going to do this on our own, I was thinking 20,000, I thought would be a reasonable ask for ARPA to do this project. And then we found out about the grant. Right. We found out the grant would be about 60 or 80,000. So obviously we wouldn't put 60 or 80 into ARPA. Right. But let's say it's a $10,000 match. And let's say it was 110,000. I said to Blythe, I think I could make a case to put take 20,000 from ARPA. And if we get the 180,000 for the grant, that we'd be able to move forward with it. Um, so we submitted it. Um, and then I emailed the Lieutenant Governor's Chief of Staff saying, I know that the Lieutenant Governor has been very involved in municipal broadband. And I just want to share the small rural community's experience mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. this process. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, um, and then I emailed them back and said, thank you so very, because then I got a response at like 11 o'clock. I'm sorry, we can't get you this estimate. And I'm like, I'm confused because I just got the estimate an hour ago. Um, so we can put in a request now to have them come out and actually evaluate at no cost the 24 poles. Are there any trees that need to be cut? Do any poles need to be replaced? And it takes two to three months for that which will be fine mm -hmm. because they're working on that. We're waiting on the state mm -hmm. to decide if we get the grant. Yep. And if they come in at a hundred thousand dollars and we get the grant, we're good to go. If they come in at 150,000, we'll apply next year and we'll put in 250,000 for yep. the ask, yep. which is the average of what communities were getting in this grant. Mm -hmm. But for a half a mile, I'm sure these other towns are not a half a mile. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So that potentially may not happen, but it was worth the exercise and learning how we have to. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It is a process. Well, let's see what happens. And I don't know how many hours Blythe did, but it shouldn't have been many. I think we budgeted 10 hours. Mm -hmm. I hope it's like three or four. Um, oh, yeah. So just because I would hate to not get the grant and have spent that money, but at least we'll know for the future how difficult it is to work with potential vendors. Um, and, oh, by the way, it's not community co connections. They should have connected you with third-party applications oh, or something. Oh, so that makes all the difference in the world. Doesn't it, though? Yeah. So I'm going to share that on Gobi's next call for anybody who's doing a municipal grant and needs to get in touch with national grid but that's what should be on the grant application they should give you that insight yeah because we're not used to having to right. do poll work right true 
And so it, they make it much harder on a small town yep. to get grants. Yep. And yet that's what they're supposed to be trying to get access for. Well, they do, but they don't. Yeah. You know. This is not for decisions or anything, but it's something we can discuss at a later meeting in depth. I think we're at a point where we need to either talk to Blythe or somebody about a uh, how do we go about getting a firm to do a needs assessment on this building? Well, the rest of the world falls in. <laughs> Well, when they were up there, I was actually afraid yeah. <laughs> that they might come through the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, that's true, too. And I would also reach out to CMRPC because I know they do this. Uh, feasibility on building? Mm -hmm. okay. And it's well, part of the one-stop grant and the rural something. Why don't we start with them, mm -hmm. see if we can get some information for our future meeting and, and discuss it. Connor, who's doing, he's the head of regional blah, blah, blah. Um, he's the, the person to go to. He's working on the ADA grant. Oh, okay. okay. And um, Peter Duran's office helper, Jared, to, to let him know what we need and if we need a feasibility study. To by Friday, know. by today. I think by it was today. by 3 o'clock. By today. We sent something to them, didn't we? Not this time around. I did not. I did uh, last time. Because he told us that when he was here that day. Yeah. And um, it was the, t um, it was when it was. Donna Farmer said to let her know oh, at, the, at the same time, the too, because fire truck, that was all then. Then we did another one. It wasn't, it wasn't. We emailed, or at least. What did we do? Individually, we emailed or something. So there was something that we said, we did the, I'll have to go look at my emails. Yeah, but. What you just said, the fire truck and all that, wasn't that for FY25? Yeah. So we, are, we did? I remember yeah. getting some. Yeah. So we're all set. Okay. And we had the town hall on that. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was? Yeah. Okay. I remember this. I mean, I so was, we'll be, we should see, I mean, he should have, they should have sent us their proposed amendments, um, but they're all going to be posted. I think they ought to be turned in by today. And then they start debate next week okay mm -hmm. on the amendments so and i actually it's funny the the kid talked about the state house news service i just signed up for it and i got my password today because <laughs> i started reading the the house bill mm -hmm. where they cut rural funding mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. anything about cutting seniors more no no, no. oh good good but the the fact that the um, gateway cities got a hundred and four dollars mm -hmm. versus our thirty. Thirty, yep. <laughs> Nineteen regional districts. Mm -hmm. out of thirty. And guess where those regional districts mostly are? Rural. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Because they're not in the eastern part of the state that has the most legislators. There's Um, nope. I'm off that. I think. Motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 112.